Hey, TC family, welcome to church. It is such a great Sunday to be able to get together and look at God's greater heart and purpose for us as a church family. I hope you guys have had an incredible week as we're coming back from our Easter uh, event. Really, it was an event. It was so incredible to see so many people online engaging with what Jesus has for them, as well as seeing so many people come offline. Um, and it's just been incredible, man. There's something about looking into somebody's eyes and seeing God work and move in their heart that will, it will never get old to me. You know, the fact of the matter is, is oftentimes in church or really in community, uh, we start out journeying together. And then because of different degrees of change, maybe it's uh, events of life or circumstances or a pandemic or all these different things. Sometimes we uh, have a few degrees of change in our life from our community. And those few degrees over time are amplified. And where we started out together, we ended very far apart. And that's really the kind of conversations I've been having. So many people that were really connected in the body of Christ now, after the last uh, couple years and this last hard season that we've all gone to, they feel disconnected. Um, and the truth is, is the church mission, vision, the body of Christ, we haven't changed at all, but through different circumstances, people maybe have gotten a few degrees of separation from what God is doing. And now our heart is that we would all come back. We would all find our place in the body. We would all have that revelation that we were created for something bigger than me. In fact, that's why we have at TC, the family value that it's we, not me that we are not called to journey our faith alone, but we are called to journey our faith within the bigger body of Christ. You know, and the funny thing is, is we're starting a new series today called The Mission, and it's a three-week series, and we're starting off on how, as the body of Christ, we are called to mission. We aren't called just to be stagnant. We aren't called just to do what's comfortable, but we're called to go out. We're called to understand God's heart for his people, to be able to see what he's doing in us and through us, and then take that, that value and those gifts and those talents and that beauty and that treasure to people everywhere we go. In fact, as we understand the mission, it allows us to be unified and allows us to come together around a common cause as we commit to this mission that Jesus has called us to. I just want to read to you from some scripture, and really this is kind of the founding scripture when you think about the vision and mission of God's heart. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy, growing, and full of love. And here at The Collective, we absolutely are passionate about the church, the body of Christ, this faith community, always being healthy, always growing, and always being full of God's love. In fact, the vision statement at TC is kind of based off that scripture from Ephesians 4, because who knows you can't have mission without vision. A mission is how we're doing it, but a vision is where we're going. And sometimes you can find yourself in life without vision, but with mission, and you find yourself going in circles or going like this all over, all over the place, and that could lead to an exhausting spiritual journey. But we need clear vision over what we're going to accomplish so we know how to execute with our mission. So let me just read to you right now, and maybe you've heard this before, but if you're new to the church, this is the vision of the collective, and this is what it says. We will see God's kingdom expand across the globe as we love people well and serve our spheres of influence. We will lead God's people to a flourishing life as we help them build healthy relationships and grow in awareness of and walk out all of the incredible gifts and talents they have in Christ. We will impact every city we are in by meeting everyone where they are with God's tangible love, with innovation and creativity, always pointing to Christ as the author of our faith story. So at TC, it's our vision that when you look at the church, when you look at the faith community of God, 
that's what you see. You see people using their gifts. You see people loving and serving their personal spheres of influence. You see people taking their place into this beautiful faith story in which Jesus is the author of. And that happens when we are healthy, growing, and we're full of love. You know, if you grew up in church, you may have a very specific idea in your head when you hear the word mission, right? If we all agree to where we're going and what we want to see when we get there, sometimes there can be some differentiation or some, uh, some lack of understanding when it comes to how we're going to do it. And if you grew up in church and you have a very specific idea of how the mission is done or how we're supposed to do mission, um, it may be hard for you to be unified with other people in the body of Christ because they have a different idea of what mission looks like. So in the church that I found Jesus in, mission was always a trip somewhere else. I didn't really understand what it meant to be a part of a missional community or live with mission in my heart. I thought mission was like something you go and do. So when I was first starting to serve in ministry, I remember we we went on a missions trip to El Salvador in Central America. This time I was living in Seattle, Washington, and we went to El Salvador in Central America, and it was an incredible experience. Uh, I was there for 10 days. I worked in prisons with gang leaders. Uh, We worked in orphanages. We did community development projects. It was such a great time. It was a small team, me and about 10 of my friends. And uh, we went there with our pastor at the time, and we just served and loved the communities of El Salvador for about 10 days. Now, really, no one spoke Spanish. Um, No one really knew what anything was. So we just kind of helped organizations that were pre-existing there. And it was a special time because it was in that time that God spoke so many things to me. He showed me so much. He widened the the capacity of my heart so much because really he showed me how big this world is and how big his kingdom is, right? But the fact of the matter is, is after that 10 days in El Salvador, we came back to uh, Washington State and then the missions trip was over. On the missions trip, we were committed to using all of our minutes of all of our days to serve the community. You know, when we saw homeless people, we stopped to try to feed them. When we were working with orphans, we spent all day trying to teach them, love them, and encourage them. When we were working with the prisons, we were spending all of our moments, all of our time, even when we were tired, even if we didn't understand the language, we would put ourselves out there with discomfort to try to serve people that were different than us, even more dangerous and even kind of threatening, we still wanted to commit to this act of service because that was the mission. When we came back to Washington State, the mission stayed in El Salvador and we got back to our comfortable lives. But can I look at you in the eyes right now and tell you God's truth? His mission is not an event. It's a lifestyle, it's a choice, and it's a calling. Mission is what you and I choose when we submit in obedience to God's great commission in our life. I want to say that again. Mission is what you and I choose when we submit to God's great commission in our life. Because going on missions trips is awesome, but it's not as awesome if we don't wake up every morning with missional living. Wake up every morning choosing God's mission above our mission, choosing God's agenda above our agenda. In fact, there's a section of scripture Uh, from the book of Luke, where Jesus emphasizes this lifestyle of missional living that we're all called to. I want to read to you from Luke 10, verse 25. This is what it says. It says, Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, Already you kind of see the, the intensity or the perspective of that lawyer in that question. He wasn't even interested in, like, what what his reward or what his calling or what aspects of reconciliation were happening here on earth. He was only thinking about the end and eternity. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, Jesus said to him, what is written in the law and how do you read it? And he answered him, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength and all your mind. And you should love your neighbor as yourself. This is the great commandment of Christ. Love God and love people. In fact, elsewhere in scripture, it says that every single detail of the whole law of the Old Testament 
can be concluded and wrapped up in these two commandments, loving God and loving people. The apostle Peter calls this the royal law of God, loving God and loving people. And he said to him, you have answered correctly to this and you will live. But he, the lawyer, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? What an interesting question. Jesus says, love God and love people. And you already start asking, but who exactly am I required to love? This guy was a strategist. Who am I required to love, right? We all immediately, oftentimes when someone requires something from us, we try to over-clarify these expectations so we can meet the required expectations, but nothing more. Did you hear me? Oftentimes we wanna just check the box at the bare minimum. Who then do I have to love? Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. And this is what I love about Jesus. He said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by the chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to that place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and he bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine as a disinfectant. Then he set him back on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will return to you when I come back. And then Jesus said, which one of these three do you think proved to be the neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? And then the lawyer said, well, the one who showed him mercy. And then Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. So the lawyer was asking Jesus, what's the mission? But what's the mission, Jesus? What's the mission? I can't do everything. I can't do this or that. Just tell me what the mission is. See, we're looking for mission as a destination. Mission is a lot easier when it's somewhere you go and then you come home from the mission. And that's what he was looking for. He said, what's the mission? And Jesus says, this is the mission, is that you would have a heart like the Samaritan. See, the first two people that walked by, they were on their own mission. They said a priest and a Levite, which is crazy because I'm sure that they had really good, important things that they were committed to, things regarding God, religion, and the temple even. And they were committed to their mission. They were committed to their agenda and what they saw as priority. But the Samaritan, who obviously did have mission and agenda in his life. He had money. That means he had to have been working somewhere. He obviously had an agenda, but because of God's mission, he submitted his mission to God's mission. He submitted his agenda to God's direction. And he chose to live missionally as he cared for the man that was beaten by robbers. See, something interrupted the mission of the Good Samaritan and he stopped with humility to, instead of walking past him, stepping over him, or, avoid, or avoiding the opportunity, he submitted his mission to God's mission. And it said he helped him. And he didn't just help him a little bit. He didn't just pull over and pray for him or say, I'm sorry this happened to you, God bless you. But he helped him with his wounds, and he helped him with his care. And then he even said to the innkeeper, anything else you need, I'll take care of it as well. He went above and beyond. He didn't do the bare minimum. See, it's going to be a burden to always try to do a bare minimum because bare minimum isn't surrender. That means that you're carrying something on your own when you're doing the bare minimum. You're saying, what's the least I can carry? See, surrender and submission is when we say, I'm not going to try to carry it. I'm just going to surrender to whatever you call me to where we're not trying to take on Christ's agenda and add it to our agenda, that's a burden, but we're just taking all of who we are and our agenda and we're submitting it at the feet of Jesus, saying, Jesus, I don't wanna carry my thing and your thing, I only want to carry your thing. I wanna live according to your mission. And that's really, really hard because there's so many things that we wanna do. There's so many things based on our necessity, 
or our ego or our priorities or maybe our value system when we were growing up. There's so many things that demand from us. But the fact of the matter is, is none of those things have the same weight as the things that God has called us to. And we're going to spend the next two weeks talking about how we are equipped to walk out God's mission. How we need discipleship, we need equipping, and we need understanding. We need, we need comfort, and we need leadership. And there's all these things to help us be able to live a life, not based on our mission, but God's mission. But before we even go there, what I'm going to invite you into is the opportunity to begin to say, I don't want to go on a missions trip somewhere. I don't want to go do a missional activity, but I want a change of heart and I want to live according to God's mission for our life. Let me pray with you. So Father, I just pray that everybody watching today would be overwhelmed by your love. Lord, that they wouldn't listen to a message like this and say this is so unrealistic or this is impossible, but they would be humbled because of their lack of understanding and they would say, Jesus, for me to live this kind of life, I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you with my time management. I'm gonna need you involved in my resource. I'm gonna need you involved in my decision-making. I'm gonna need you as the comfort and the compass to my every moment of every day. So God, in everything, we wanna completely depend on you and surrender to you and follow your mission for our lives. So God, I pray that those that are disconnected and they feel isolated and they don't feel capable, Lord, that they would get connected this week. They would find connect groups or ministry teams. They would become a part of a community to find more encouragement, more fulfillment in who you are and what you've called us to be. So God, we thank you that at the end of the day, before you ever called us to reach and love anybody else, you first reached and loved us. Lord, that you were the one who met us where we were. You were the good Samaritan. So God, through you being the good Samaritan to us, we would learn from you and we would have the capacity and the heart to be the good Samaritan for others. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, TC family, love you so much. Love being able to spend the Sunday service with you online and please get connected. You really can't journey your faith alone. Become a part of something bigger than you. We'll see you next week.